Hi, everyone, and welcome to our second pre-conference workshop for today. Um, so as you may know, ID Pro is a wonderful organization that helps to foster identity professionals um, and help them with their, their development as identity professionals. They recently announced a certified ID Pro um, program called SID Pro. Um, at the same, so today, the FIDO Alliance has actually announced its first professional certification program, news, news Flash. You'll hear a little bit more about that in a little bit, but we are also going to be um, having a FIDO certified professional program just announced today. And so you might be thinking, how, how might these two programs complement each other? How, how, how might they be different from each other? And that's exactly what this session is for. So please help me to welcome Dean Sachs from AWS and Dr. Ray Rivera from the FIDO Alliance to talk about SIDPRO and FIDO Certified Professional and how they come together. Thank you. to our session and we're, we plan on doing a presentation, kind of introducing you to both the different programs. Um, but we first wanted to kind of talk, engage uh, the audience on how many of you, with just a raise of hands, um, have professional certifications in this industry? Or at all, whether it's cybersecurity or project management. Okay, so some of them. Small number. <laughs> Small number. Um, well, we kind of, um, both ID Pro and FIDO Alliance started going down this road at different times. And what we found out with each other was how, wow, we both have professional certification goals, um, certifications in this industry. And the reasons why we did that were very similar. But one thing that we want to make sure that everybody understands is that it's not one or the other. It's not go get the SID Pro or get the FIDO Certified Professional, that these are very, very complementary certifications. And the end goal is to basically, um, for a, a certified professional, to have the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to do their job. And that's kind of where we went with both of these programs. And, and I think it's helpful to understand um, why they are complementary as well, and how or how they're complementary. So when we look at the um, CID Pro program and the certification test from ID Pro, um, what you see is that identity is an extremely broad field, uh, and it's an extremely deep field as well. And so CID Pro took the uh, approach of going broad and w going very wide and reasonably shallow. Um, so we're CID Pro is attempting to demonstrate you have a broad-based understanding of the industry um, and tools and technologies, and I'll talk more about this in, with the slide deck, uh, around identity. And we call this the top of the T, right? This is the, the wide um, but not very deep uh, set of knowledge one, is, one needs to, become, to be successful uh, within the identity industry. Whereas certifications like the FIDO certification program are what we call the deep part of the T. So if you imagine CID Pro is here, FIDO is here, they intersect with one another. Uh, they have some overlap with one another as far as knowledge uh, necessary, um, but they approach it from different perspectives. One, be, one being, again, wide, uh, one being very narrow and very, very, very deep. And because of this, it's likely that you'll find people in the future who have both the CID Pro certification as well as FIDO certifications or other deeper dives into certification in specific areas. That may be healthcare, it could be financials, it could be education, or it could be a deep dive into authorization or a deep dive into SKIM or SAML or OpenID Connect or other, met, or other uh, parts of the identity industry that fill in more of those deep dives in that T. Yeah. So in, in one of the things that we're kind of working on coordinating, we don't have any specific details on what that's gonna look like, but more of a collaborative effort between the two certifications um, for individuals who want to uh, go seek out both of them. And it, you know, whether it's, you know, conference discounts, whether it's, you know, just benefiting from working with like-minded individuals and being able to collaborate together, uh, those are the, the kind of the, collaboration efforts that we haven't completely defined that we will, and once that happens, then we'll be able to announce those and what that is. Okay. 
Yeah. You want to go? Yeah, you want to you start the slide decks? Yeah, we All can right. do that. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and, and jump into the slides and talk a little bit deeper about uh, the ID Pro certification exam. Um, so uh, by way of introductions, uh, my name is Dean Sachs. Uh, I'm a senior security engineer with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I, I work for the AWS Identity Organization. But I'm not actually here representing AWS today. I'm actually here in my capacity as one of the founding members of ID Pro. Uh, and also as the first recipient of the CID Pro certification. Um, so I took the, the beta exam over the summer uh, as ID Pro was working on, on the exam. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, uh, the first uh, recipients of CID Pro were announced, and, and I, was, I was one of them. And so Sarah Cicchetti, who's one of the founders of ID Pro, asked me to come here today. Uh, uh, she couldn't make it, and so she asked me to come and talk a little bit about ID Pro uh, and a little bit about the exam, um, where it comes from, what it covers, et cetera. And so that's what we're going to do today. So first of all, how many of you in here are members of ID Pro? I see one, I see two, okay. Maybe, I hope by the end of this, uh, those numbers increase significantly, because I, I hope to show you some value in ID Pro, but I'm not really here to sell you on ID Pro. What I want to talk about mostly is the certification exam. Uh, however, it's helpful to understand what ID Pro is and how, and how this intersects with certification. So ID Pro is um, the Identity Professionals uh, professional uh, program, right? It, it was founded in 2017 uh, by Sarah Cicchetti uh, of AWS and Ian Glazer of Salesforce um, in order to help define, support, and improve the digital identity profession. Um, I became a founding member after it was announced in 2017 at CIS and uh, Cloud Identity Summit in Chicago uh, because I really believed in the mission of fostering ethics uh, and excellence in the practice and profession of digital identity. Um, as all of you know who are here, this, this profession is very broad and very complex. There's a lot to learn, and it's hard to sometimes, as a newbie to the industry, figure out how to, how to, how to find your way into that industry itself. And that's really where I want to I go in this conversation, is talking about how I found my way in this industry and where that intersects with the work happening out of ID Pro as well as FIDO today. Um, so again, not going to sell you on ID Pro, but I do want to touch a bit on the benefits here. And I'm actually not going to touch on the benefits necessarily on this slide. Rather, I want to talk about the three benefits that I find most useful from ID Pro and how they impact my professional life. And those three benefits are the community, the ID Pro body of knowledge, and the Certified Identity Professional Program, or CID Pro. So, on the community side, um, ID Pro has been fantastic, right? Through the pandemic, uh, I think all of us have had a hard time establishing and maintaining uh, contact with our communities. I know the last time I saw Ray was, what, Portugal in uh, 2020, 2020, right before the, right before the pandemic really <laughs> hit here in, uh, in the West. Um, and it's been hard. I for, I, for one, don't enjoy online conferences. I don't find them to be as valuable as in-person uh, connectivity. And Slack, the ID Pro Slack channel has become that uh, watering hole for the identity professional community. Um, when I looked this morning, there were over 1,000 people in the general Slack channel for ID Pro this morning. And it's great, you have 1,000 people there. That can turn into a mess of people talking over each other, et cetera, but that's not what actually happens. What actually happens in Slack is that you have 1,000 people in these channels who are passionate about identity and learning about identity and sharing their knowledge about identity. And so when I have a question about a protocol, say WebAuthn or OpenID Connect or Skim or SAML, I often reach out on Slack because I know through one of those channels I'm going to find somebody who can not only answer my question, but that person might just very well be one of the folks who wrote those specifications to begin with. Um, because you'll find people in, in Slack, like Vittorio Bertocci from Auth0, uh, who, who works uh, 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 quite a bit in uh, OpenID Connect. Or you'll find uh, folks who have worked on Skim, like Pam Dingle. Um, so it's a great place for us to connect, share information, and, 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 and find support when we have hard challenges in the world of identity. And of course, if I get bored of all things identity, I can always use the Slack channel to go to uh, hashtag pitboss, and I can learn from Heather Flanagan a little bit about how to make a better pork butt uh, on my barbecue. The second benefit is the ID Pro body of knowledge. And this can be accessed by anybody, not just ID Pro members, but by anybody through, uh, through the URL bok.idpro.org. And the ID Pro body of knowledge is a vendor neutral 
community-driven set of articles on topics important to identity professionals. And you can see some of the topics here, uh, such as managing identity in, in customer service operations, terminology, peek into the future of decentralized identity. These are more than just articles, though. These were written as scholarly articles. They were written like they were written for a scholarly journal. So I've had the opportunity to write an article on account recovery. You can hear me talk a little bit about that more on Wednesday morning here. Um, and the way it works is one writes an article based upon their professional experience and knowledge. It's then reviewed by others uh, in the community who review it for accuracy, for tone, for uh, et cetera. Uh, they provide feedback. You incorporate that feedback into your documentation. It's then sent off to a professional editor, Heather Flanagan, uh, and she edits it, um, and eventually the articles get published. On an annual basis, those same articles are updated. So this vendor-neutral um, uh, information that is so helpful to newbies to the field to read and understand and try and gain understanding of topics that maybe are outside of their, their normal day-to-day -day work, um, on an annual basis, they're updated because this world is changing regularly. The world of identity changes so fast that I don't think any of us can really keep up with it without help from our community. Now, as I said, um, this creates a base set of reference materials for people in the community um, that are written by practitioners for practitioners. And because they're vendor neutral, it takes away some of the vendor spin that all of us do, because that's part of our jobs, but it takes away some of that spin and, and gets down to the heart of the matter of, of what these protocols are or what these standards are, or even what are the laws around identity, such as GDPR or CCPA. Um, now, this was created by the community. And I don't know about you, but I am really busy. I have, a, I have a busy day job, I have a busy home life, but I made time to do this because I thought it was important to give back to my community. And that's what we see through everybody who has, do, who has donated their time and effort to the body of knowledge. But we also see that in the, the creation of the CID Pro exam, which I'll get to in a, in a bit. But before I, I get to the CID Pro exam, I want to tell you a little about my history and my journey into the world of identity and tell you why this is important to uh, the CID program and how this intersects with the CID program and where I think we can make things better in the future for people who are joining this field. And we need people to join this field because there are hundreds of thousands of open jobs in the world of identity today. If you look on Indeed.com, uh, I think last week the number was somewhere north of 200,000 jobs in identity that, are being, that people are searching uh, for employees. So clearly this is a growing field in need of, of more folks. So if you're not familiar with this uh, slide, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. And I think the Dunning-Kruger effect is, is interesting because it reflects some of my reality in becoming part of this, this world of identity. And the Dunning-Kruger effect is a type of cognitive bias. And it's a cognitive bias where people believe that they are smarter and more capable than they really are. Um, so if you look toward the, toward the uh, left of the x-axis here, the no, it's marked as know nothing on the competence axis, um, you see that people who have just a little bit of knowledge reach what we call the peak of Mount Stupid. Uh, because you have just enough knowledge where every problem looks like a nail and, and your knowledge is a hammer. Uh, I've been here, I've done this, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but as you move further to the right, eventually you realize, wow, I don't know much at all. And you hit this valley of despair. And then slowly over time, you come out of the valley of despair, despair up toward the, uh, the plateau of sustainability as you begin to learn more and more. Unfortunately for many of us, myself included, as you learn more and more, you feel like you still don't know a whole lot. And you, you have this, this feeling of imposter syndrome, especially when you have no way to measure yourself or understand how your knowledge fits contextually into the realm of identity and, and the professional uh, work around identity. So it was fortuitous that last week uh, on Friday, I saw the ID Pro Skills Survey, uh, which is an annual survey in its fourth year, came out. And there were some choice quotes in there that intersect nicely with this Dunning-Kruger effect and what we're talking about today around ID Pro and the CID Pro exam. And so I thought this was great. It says, early stage professionals consistently overestimate their skills, whilst experienced practitioners underestimate theirs. I've been on both sides of this coin. This impacts individual career development and presents employers with hiring, nurturing, and retention challenges. If we don't know what we don't know, 
we can make mistakes. If we underestimate what we do know, we may not put ourselves in the right place to leverage that information or leverage that knowledge to the benefit of our employers, our customers, or others that we interact with. The second quote I wanted to pull out, uh, again from the IDPro Skills Survey, is that the digital identity industry is notorious amongst practitioners for being both broad and complex. Amongst IDPro members, uh, the majority take over two years to feel proficient, and a significant portion take longer than five years. And I can tell you again from my own experience, it was about eight years between getting introduced to this concept of digital identity and realizing that I was working in this field of digital identity and actually feeling like, wow, I, I, I actually am competent at this. I, I know what I'm talking about and I can hold my own in this room. But more shocking than that is this quote. The survey consistently shows a high percentage of individuals reporting that they do not feel proficient even after 15 years in the profession. Now, I've not been in the profession for 15 years. I've been in security for over 20 now. Um, but uh, again, I'm only the last 10 or so in identity. And um, it's shocking to me that people can go for 15 years and not feel proficient. There are probably a few reasons for this. Some of those reasons include the fact that the field is just growing and, uh, and changing over time. And so it, it always feels like we're playing catch up and we're never quite going to get there. Um, but people shouldn't feel. Uh, uh, people shouldn't feel like they are not proficient after this amount of time and energy expended in this field. And we need to find a way to help them get to that level of understanding and proficiency where they feel like they can bring that knowledge to bear, again, for their employers or the customers of their employers. So let's come back. Let's come back to the Dunning-Kruger effect and let's talk a little bit about, about my history and my story uh, and how it relates to the CIT Pro exam. So, Show of hands, how many of you studied identity in college or in some formal fashion? One, okay, <laughs> two. All right, you folks are the outliers. Most of us, this didn't happen. Um, there was a podcast earlier this summer with Mike Kaiser uh, that was recorded at uh, Identiverse uh, in June in Denver. And of the people who were there and recording the podcast, uh, my background, I have a, doctor, I have a bachelor's in, in, in biology and I spent a number of years working on a doctorate in genetics uh, and left all but dissertation. Uh, my friends in identity come from high energy particle physics, political science, Spanish, history, right? These are not traditional entry points into IT careers necessarily, and they certainly aren't ways that we get knowledge about identity that allows us to, to uh, become part of this community and become professionals. And so I came into this on accident. I was working a job here in Seattle. Uh, I was asked to do some, some work around federation uh, and some consumer-facing identity work. And that was when I went to my first Gartner conference uh, in identity around 2011 or so, 2010. And that was kind of when I was like, oh, there's, a, there's an industry here. OK, this is interesting. Um, and I went back, and I continued dabbling in identity for a few years. I moved to uh, my current employer. Um, and at this point, I knew that I knew stuff about identity, but it was unclear to me how that was useful to my employer. It was unclear to me how to present that on a resume. It was unclear whether I knew the right stuff and whether I could interact with other folks in identity uh, and do so at a professional level and feel like I was competent and, and, and knew what I was talking about and had something to offer. And this all came to a head for me in 2016. I attended the European Identity, Cl Identity and Cloud Summit in 2016 and I hit the valley of despair. So I had clearly been at the peak of Mount Stupid before this, but I hit the valley of despair because I got there and I heard all these people talking about CASB and GDPR and all these things that were adjacent to the work that I was doing, but were not part of what I knew. And I felt like I had nothing to offer. Um, so I didn't engage with the folks at the conference. I didn't engage in deep conversations. And I went home and kind of felt a, sen a little sense of despair. And so I just quietly kept toiling away at my own work. And it was around this time that I was looking to hire some identity people to join me uh, in, in, the, in the work that I was doing. And I ran across Sarah Cicchetti, one of the founders of ID Pro. And while Sarah and I didn't wind up working together for a couple of years, um, Sarah was instrumental into getting me into the conference speaking circuit and helping me validate that I actually had something to say. And I had something to say that was important and that people actually wanted to listen to that. 
My employer around the same time joined the FIDO Alliance, which gave me the opportunity to engage with folks in the FIDO Alliance, like Ray, I see Mike Jones over there, I saw Bill Letty here a little while ago, um, and get involved in working groups, the, the consumer deployment working group and the enterprise deployment working group, and really start to, to build my knowledge and flex my muscles in this realm of identity, and hopefully come up that slight slope of enlightenment and toward the, the plateau of sustainability. And this was great for me. But I had some built-in advantages um, because of my employment, uh, because of where I am in, in the world, et cetera, that not everybody has. And this is not a sustainable mechanism to bring people into this world of identity and bring them up to a base level of knowledge to be competent identity practitioners. And it's also not a great way for employers to identify candidates who have a, a, a base set of knowledge that can allow them to hit the ground running as soon as they enter an identity role. And that's where CID Pro comes in. So CID Pro is the Certified Identity Professional Program. It is the first professional program built by identity professionals for identity professionals. Now, when I say it's built by identity professionals, I mean it. Sarah put out a call in, uh, about a year ago now for uh, folks in ID Pro to help develop the blueprint for what became the CID Pro exam. So what is the base level of knowledge that one has to have to pass the exam? And when she put that call out, she got so many people, she had to turn them away. Now again, these are the same busy professionals who are writing the body of knowledge uh, and engaged in, a, in, in other, uh, other realms, whether it's standards writing or, or other things. So these are people who believe so strongly in the value of certification, the value of this kind of an exam, that they gave their time and energy to Sarah and ID Pro to make this happen. And you can see some of the uh, blueprint developers, all the blueprint developers here, as well as the question writers. These folks wrote hundreds and hundreds of questions that then uh, folded into the test. And once they were folded, uh, and once they had been had been previewed and, and run through a beta test, now the full test is released, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that test looks like. It's probably a good point uh, uh, for me to, uh, to say that the exam is undergoing some edits. Um, there is a second version uh, being produced right now that will improve the quality and the robustness of the test. This is what happens as you learn from beta testing and early testing of your, your test that um, some things need to change, and so that's happening right now. So if you are a member of ID Pro and you want to help out, check out the ID Pro certification channel on Slack, um, and there will be an open call for additional question writers. And if you're not a member of ID Pro, Maybe a good time to get involved in ID Pro if you want to help with that journey. So what does CID Pro cover? There are five domains that the exam covers. The first is the basic elements of an identity solution. What's an IDP? What's a relying party? What's a directory? What's an OTP? These are basic sets of information that one needs to understand in order to, uh, to demonstrate a, cap a, a capability in identity. The second is identifiers, the identity lifecycle, and identity proofing. So cool, I now know what a directory is, and I have something in a directory. How do I refer to it? How do I manage joiners, leavers, movers, rejoiners um, within my identity solution? And how does that work differently between, say, consumer and, uh, and um, uh, enterprise-based identity solutions? And identity proofing. How do I know you are who you say you are? When we're in this virtual world and we're not connected, how do I know that, uh, how does somebody know that I'm Dean Sachs and I'm not an imposter when I go to transact business online? The third is the one that's near and dear to my heart. As an old school security person, security for identity is, is uh, near and dear to my heart. And identity really is security. If you think about zero trust environments, identity is the primary security control that one has in a zero trust environment. And so having strong identity proofing, having strong uh, authentication, such as using the FIDO protocols, is really important to being able to build and execute an identity system. The fourth, rules and standards. So standards, uh, we've mentioned a couple today, OpenID Connect, uh, WebAuthn, Skim, all of these are important to have an understanding of what they are and how they interact within the identity ecosystem. And the rules are things like GDPR and CCPA and how these state, national, and international level uh, rules or laws impact the ability of, uh, of practitioners to implement and operate identity systems. And the last is operational considerations. Uh, and so operational considerations would be things like 
we understand how interactions work very well between our, hum our human users and our online systems, but what happens when they need to reach out to customer service in order to reset a password or recover an account? <clears throat> or perform other sort of mutating actions through these customer service environments. Aaron Crow, who I see sitting in the back here, wrote a great article for ID Pro about that uh, with JP Rowan from Auth0. Uh, and, and I highly recommend reading these because these articles are what drive the questions from these domains as much as possible. So the, as I, so the reference material for the domains is the body of knowledge. So we have this continuity between them. Now the body of knowledge is not complete. This is a huge undertaking. It will take years to complete, if ever complete, the body of knowledge, right? This industry is always growing and changing, so the documentation will always be growing and changing. Where possible, information is pulled from the BOK, but where it's not possible, it's pulled from other primary sources. And that could be things like standards from IETF or FIDO or W3C or whatever it may be. So what does the test look like? Um, the test is actually testing understanding. It's not testing necessarily specific knowledge. So let me give you a little description of what I mean. So here's an example question from the test. Miguel is developing an application. The application consumes JSON web tokens, JOTs, from an issuer. Miguel knows that it's standard to include JOT validation library, but he's working on a tight deadline, something we've all experienced, and his code works fine without it, so he pushes to production. Why is this a security concern? So the goal of, ID, of the CID Pro exam is to be able to answer these contextual type of questions to show an understanding of why the standard was created in the way it was and the importance of these tools. You'll note what it's not asking is an issuer claim in a JOT token takes on what format? Is it a string? Is it a fully qualified URL? What does it look like? That kind of specific knowledge is more of that deep part of the T that Ray and I talked about before, as opposed to the broad part of the T uh, that the CID Pro uh, exam is focused on. Now the exam itself is for candidates who have approximately two years of experience in the field of identity. So this is two years of full-time working on identity systems. And this is not hard and fast and set in stone. People can get there faster, some people may be slower, but roughly two years is, is the target audience. It covers the five domains that I mentioned in 150 multiple choice questions through a three hour long online proctored exam. Now because of COVID, of course, there are no in, t in person tests today. Uh, we do hope to, to change that in the future, uh, but for now it is all an online proctored exam. And the cost is 750 US dollars uh, for test takers. It is available for registration today at idpro.org slash CIDPro. Note that CIDPro is all caps here. And if you're here at the conference today, obviously I'm speaking to you, you're here. Um, there we go, there's a the slide. Um, we're offering a $150 discount off of registration uh, for anyone who wants to take the CID Pro exam. I was supposed to have some, some discount codes ready and available for all of you today, but I don't, and I apologize for that. Um, if you wouldn't mind, send me an email. Um, it's Dean Sachs, all one word, D-E-A-N-S-A-X-E, at Amazon.com. Um, I will follow up with you uh, with a discount code at a later date if you just let me know that you're registered here at the conference and, and saw this talk. If you take the exam and you pass the exam, as a celebration of releasing the exam, we're giving away a free membership to ID Pro for one year. So you too can get all those benefits uh, that come from ID Pro, joining the Slack channel, the job board, um, uh, just uh, the, the, the ability to interact with all, the, all of these folks in the identity community, as well as monthly newsletters, et cetera. And if you take the exam and you're unsuccessful in taking the exam for whatever reason, there is one free retest offered uh, for exam takers through June of 2022. And details on this are available on the idpro.org website. Uh, you can look there for further information. Last, if you are a manager, or you manage a team of identity professionals and you wanna have uh, a bulk discount on exams, we can sell, uh, ID Pro can sell you a, a, um, uh, a bundle of exam vouchers for your team and that pricing will be published again on the ID Pro website. And so you can reach out to ID Pro. If you don't see information, reach out to ID Pro uh, from contact information on the website and find out more about that. 
Again, for registration, idpro.org slash CIDPro. Uh, and with that, I think I have time for maybe one question before uh, Ray comes up and, and talks about the uh, FIDO certification program. All right, looks like no questions, Ray. <laughs> sure. It's all you. All right, thank you. Is this the clicker? It's right up there. Yeah. Next. I think they have to switch out my slides. OK. That'll be just a couple minutes. Um, so one of the things, you know, when Dean and I were approached to do this session was the different aspects to which um, our presentations are. So like Dean's was very personal. Obviously, it was his journey in um, the identity industry and um, how this exam came out, how the SID Pro certification came out, and obviously very personal to him and how it's going to you know, help advance his career. Um, so FIDO Alliance, um, I think it was announced today. Um, so we're coming out with also a FIDO certified professional program. And very, very much not in our bailiwick of certifications, right? So FIDO certifications are all technical. You know, they're products, they're you know, servers, authenticators, um, and soon to be um, IoT devices and document authenticity devices, right? So this is very different for FIDO Alliance. Um, it's not different for me, however. Um, prior to being in FIDO Alliance, I was the certification and um, education director at, CI, at ISC Squared. So if you're familiar, anybody with the CISSP, SSCP, CCSP, all those nice, wonderful acronyms, right? Um, that, that was what I was doing prior to this. So I'm very, very familiar with professional certification programs and all the benefits that come with them. Right? So this is just gonna be kind of like FIDO's journey uh, into the development of this certification. About 20, yeah, 2017, 2018, there were early conversations on, you know, maybe we should put something like this together. And then what would that look like when we did put it together? Would it be very technical? Would it be all specification focused? Would it be all about, you know, all your knowledge and understanding of UAF, U2F, or the FIDO2 specifications? So it's kind of like, you know, what would that look like? And we were just noodling it a little bit, kind of got pushed aside. And then all of a sudden, all the deployments started happening with FIDO. So we had motivation to develop the certification program. So the increase in the number of uh, companies that were deploying FIDO, we identified that there were, like, like Dean shared, you know, there's not a lot of people that have an education foundation in, you know, authentication or multi-factor authentication, right? So there was like a need for professionals to be able to show a requisite body of knowledge or an understanding of it, and how would they do that? And then also that there weren't any certification programs. So I think it's kind of interesting that ID Pro, what you said, started in 2017? 2017, and here we were in 2017, 2018, trying to think of a way that we could create a certification program for individuals in this industry and to highlight their knowledge, skills, and abilities. Right? So there's a lot of commonalities. Uh, about 2019 is when we really officially started to work through this. And then, of course, what happened in 2020. Well, we all know that story. Um, so however, in 2019, it was late in 2019, started working with an organization, professional testing organization, is a company that I had worked for in the past, or worked with in the past, develop the, all the ISC squared certifications. So I was very familiar with their, their process flow on how do you go about creating a certification program for professionals. And we did all our contact, contract negotiations and everything, and then in 2020, um, COVID hit, and it kind of delayed a lot of things. However, we continued to identify what would the use cases be? Why would somebody be interested in this certification? What was the motivating factor for somebody to get this certification? Um, some of it from a FIDO perspective was, you know, we'd have a way to connect people who have deploying, uh, you know, being able to deploy FIDO with other 
organizations and vendors wishing to do it. So as a certified, within the certification program, a lot of vendors would come to us and they would ask us for help on deploying. And that's not really our job to do, that's your job to do, you know? So as a professional in this industry, being able to have that conversation with a vendor, how to guide them into the deploying, deploying multi-factor authentication, okay? Um, talking about identity and access management. So there's a way to attest to their knowledge, skills, and abilities. So having those certifications, believe it or not, when they started doing the e-badges, it was like, maybe like, I don't know how many years ago, 10 years ago, when they came up with the e-badges and putting them on LinkedIn and how you, you know, can just click on that e-badge and get all the information, you know, when they were certified, um, you know, all that good information about that certification program. And those went off, like everybody wanted to have an e-badge. So now it's the most common thing to do. And I think I've been seeing more and more on all my LinkedIn pages, the this, this CID Pro badges out there. So a little cute little certification badge. We'll have one of those too. <laughs> and then lastly, it was if uh, as an organization wanting to improve on your security posture, right? So, we all know how important multi-factor authentication is. We all know the, the value that FIDO brings as a certified product. Uh, so it was just being able to you know, connect the two within this industry. A next step in the process was kind of trying to identify, well, who are these individuals that would get certified? What does this individual look like? Where are they working? What um, other skills and abilities might they have? And so we kind of focused on these four foundational areas. So technology architects, uh, engineering professionals that are responsible for you know, the broad set of projects across an organization. So those that have the, the you know, very technical high-end engineering um, knowledge and skills that would be interested in this certification, just based on purely what they would do on a day-to-day -day basis. Then your systems and operations engineers, security professionals. Um, this was cyber security, security professionals. It's a very broad term, but it encompasses a lot. So there's an, a huge umbrella under just when someone says, well, where do you, what do you do? And that's typically when I say, I work in cyber security. And they're like, oh, that's so cool. And I'm like, well, it, it is cool, but there's so many facets of it, right? So those individuals, we would definitely be targeting those individuals because you have to understand you know, networks, you have to understand you know, the configurations, you have to understand um, active directories, you have to understand how to put all those pieces together to make a, to, to, to deploy a working solution. And then lastly, identity and access management professionals. And that's kind of like why you know, we're doing this together because the CID Pro is very much for that, uh, that area. Um, however, as Dean said, is the, the T-shape. So here's the CID Pro, and now you're taking FIDO certification is one of those you know, deep dive content, all right? So very technical, but not too technical. I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> all right, so with that, um, compelling reasons. This is kind of like a core slide in a lot of all my talks is, you know, why would somebody want to certify their product? Well, now it's, you know, why would somebody want to get certified as a professional? And I have um, the Healthcare Information Security Practitioner, so the HCISSP from ISC Squared, so I do have that. Um, my prior background was in um, pharmaceutical manufacturing. So I have a lot of experience in education and training in the development of pharmaceuticals and the manufacturing of them. So it was kind of like, you know, combining those two, the healthcare seemed the way to go. Um, however, so you identify from an employee perspective, you know, what about my career is important enough, you know, to go get a professional certification, to go take the time. Um, CISSPs, are there any in here? Two, three, and you used to, right? I you, used to. Yeah, you do. Um, so, how long is that exam? Six hours. Six hours. <laughs> Six hours. That's a commitment. 
That's definitely a commitment. Ours isn't that long, so don't worry about it. But six hours is a, is a commitment. It's a professional commitment to go and take any of these exams, right? And it, especially as an adult professional. I mean, when was the last time you took a test, right? High school, college maybe? Yeah, probably college. And so to sit down, it's very, very nerve-wracking to, to go take this exam, because then you're sitting there like, I know this stuff, but everything goes out the window, right? <laughs> everything goes out the window. Anyways, so um, there's surveys out there that they do all the time, and ISC Squared has some of them. Uh, typically, when you're getting certifications, you increase your earning potential. Right? You increase your ability to move up the ladder. You increase um, all your like professional credibility, right, Dean? That's kind of one of these things, you know, that his, I like that, I love that graph, by the way. <laughs> it is awesome. So, and it, it helps you get from where you're like sitting at the bottom to that plateau, right? So you're just like, man, I just sat through a six hour exam and I think the cut score on that is 70% or something like that. So if you get higher than if 70%, then you're a CISSP, right? So that's also a great achievement. Um, from an employer perspective, so how many people are in charge of employees and hiring? So there's quite a few, right? So outside of um, the college education that they might have, outside of their professional experience that they might have, certifications are probably something that you look for, right? So that employee has taken the time to invest in their knowledge, skills, and abilities, and to be able to bring them in and utilize that is, is a, increases the competitive advantage of an organization. Right? I always talk about competitive advantage with the product certifications, too, for, uh, for, um, for FIDO. So if you're using a certified product, that's, that's something. Right? Organizations want to see that. Government bodies want to see that. So it's the same thing with the, the personal side of it, the professional side of it. Okay? So moving on, 2020, we went through, so Dean kind of talked about some of the process that they did, and he, you weren't directly involved with that, right? No, I, I in fact, uh, didn't have the, uh, the time or availability to help write the blueprint or work on questions for the exam. And that's why I was able to be the first beta tester of the exam. I hadn't seen the internal guts of it, so I could actually take the exam. Yeah. So the process, and I'm going to kind of go through that process just so that you have a little bit more knowledge on what it takes to create one of these things. So Dean mentioned time commitment. It is a time commitment. And so in 2020, we were able to, typically what we have is the starting point is what we call a job task analysis. And this becomes that detailed content outline. Okay. So it identifies the content that the exam items or the questions are written off of. Okay. The, J, uh, the JTA's job skills analysis is quite a lengthy process. And it's typically three full days over a weekend where you get SMEs together in a room and you just talk about it. You just start identifying you know, potential content. There's a huge survey that goes out and identifies you know, what people provide their opinion. I think this should be on it, this should be on it, this should be on it. And then you get all these people together and you actually develop it. Okay, and then it goes through another iteration process. Well, because of COVID, we weren't able to get together so we took it entirely online. And we all know exactly how that is when you're dealing with a global professional landscape, trying to identify times that everybody's gonna be comfortable and willing to get on a three, four hour call to have this conversation. So it took a lot longer than originally anticipated to identify what that content outline is. And to also identify what is a FIDO certified professional. So these are all things that have to be created, vetted. And so we came up with this definition. A FIDO certified professional is an identity, an authentication expert who helps organizations deploy and integrate FIDO standards by analyzing business requirements, and proposing a FIDO architecture that ensures secure authentication process. Okay, 
So that is what a FIDO certified professional is. That's the true definition. What's tested? A FIDO certified professional is evaluated on their expertise, right? So we have five domains. I'm gonna cover those domains in a couple slides. We also have, uh, CEID Pro has five domains, yep. right? So kind of bare minimum, simple. But you know, when you pass the exam, it provides proof that you have the knowledge, skills, and abilities that have been identified for what a FIDO certified professional is, okay? Here's the high level outline. Um, analyze business requirements. And we'll get into kind of some of the details of what that looks like. What are the co content areas under that section? Validating business and technical requirements for implementation. Designing what you've defined, validating, so not only are you defining them for the organization from a business, goal, business and a technical perspective, but you also have to be able to design it. Deploying FIDO authentication solutions. Of course, we have to have that in there, right? It is the FIDO certified professional. And then educating others about authentication. So those are the five high-level domain areas that were identified by the group of SMEs that went through the job task analysis, right? So as you can see, even just these domains, how much of a more deep technical dive they are than the CID Pro. And you can start to see exactly how complementary they are to each other, right? So under the analyze business requirements, I'm putting percentages up here, and if you wanna know what those percentages are, throughout the job task analysis process, um, and then you get into your item writing, once you have all your exam questions written, you kinda identify, well, through a survey, what percentage of the questions on our exam fit in this bucket? All right, so we decided that 16.67, yeah, and it's kind of ex obscure, but um, rounded up to 17, but that's exactly how we do it. That's how they do this. It's very, um, the whole process is, is run by experts in this, and they're called psychometricians. That's a pretty cool title. I wish I could say that. What are you, I'm a psychometrician. So what are you, like an analyzer of numbers and information, right? So that's, that's what they do. Anyways, uh, so un, under the analyzing business requirements, you have identify the stakeholder goals. So what is the organization's goal? What does this vendor wanna do? Validation of the business and technical requirements. You map the business, the business technology. So it's also kind of like understanding what technologies they have already in place and then what is gonna be needed in order to deploy a FIDO solution, right? Um, I have a misspelling in there. That's nice. Determine the Rick. I'm not sure who Rick is, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's one that uh, spell tech doesn't get and long fingernails clicking on the board. Anyways, um, that's the risk, okay? <laughs> oh, it could be, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Deploying a FIDO solution, it might be tricky, so it could be very much. <laughs> um, determine the limitations of the current system kind of mentioned that before, and then prior prioritize the values, okay, of the, of the value of the requirements. So what is the value, overall organizational value? Uh, moving into validating business and technical requirements of the implementation, so 23.33% of the questions are gonna be in this category. And I was like, he's raising his hand in the back. I was like, am I out of time? No, okay, you're stretching. All right, good, thanks. <laughs> um, determine the feasibility of the task. Right, so it's probably really important to understand, like if you go into an organization to deploy a FIDO solution, is it feasible? Okay, so how much of a, a, you know, a financial impact is there gonna be in order to deploy a FIDO solution? Right, so a lot of organizations would wanna know that. The regulatory and legal compliance, so when you get into the standards, we always have um, you know, concerns from a regulatory perspective, from a legal and compliance perspective. Size the system, is it scalable? Are they gonna have to buy additional equipment? Are they gonna have to do additional um, technical um, capabilities on the system in order to deploy? The implementation phases, build the proof of concept, and then conduct the testing. Right. Designing and implementing business technical requirements. 
So this is 28% of the exam. So majority of the questions are gonna be within this designing that solution. So what are the features from a technical requirement perspective? The user experience. So in the deployment um, working groups, we have the, um, the whole that, like the whole UX experience, right? So what does that look like for the user? And that needs to be part of the development of that solution. Investigate integration of FIDO solutions with the existing system from a business process perspective. So how is it gonna be disruptive when you go to deploy the solution? And if it is, then you have to mitigate those disruptions. Device identity, system architecture, and then implement the features from technical requirements. Okay. So I know Dean didn't get into this much detail um, from the content outline, but every certification program has a, this detailed content outline. And in addition to this, there are other layers of that outline that you, you are not even seeing right now. So it goes into very specifics, and that's how you get all the exam items written. All right. Deploying FIDO authentication solutions, all right? Configure the FIDO components. So this is where we get into understanding the specifications that the Alliance has defined and um, published, right? So you really have to understand FIDO solutions. And it's not just FIDO solutions. So if um, you, uh, FIDO2, FIDO2 is CTAP and WebAuthn. So there's, I can guarantee you, there's a lot of questions that relate to WebAuthn and the integration in the browsers, right? So all those components are part of this. So it's not just specific to FIDO, but it's deploying FIDO solutions and understanding all the mechanics that go into that. Implementing monitoring and technical support. That's a big question a lot of times. And it, um, in some of the surveys or uh, reports that I've seen, when an organization deploys a FIDO solution, the amount of money that that is decreased on the technical support pieces of it, right? So they're saving money because there's not as many people calling in, I need to reset my password, I need to reset my password, right? Um, so we see a lot of that happening when they um, deploy FIDO solutions. So you need to be able to monitor that, right? Is, it, is that risk benefit there? Um, test the components and measure success, all right? Uh, my favorite one, educating others about authentication. So the um, subject matter experts that worked on this detailed content outline felt that it was important enough that you were able to go into an organization that wants to deploy a FIDO solution and tell them why they need to do it. All right. So this, this category kind of sounds like, oh, I'm gonna go talk about FIDO. Well, yeah, you can go talk about FIDO, but you need to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk, right? So you better understand FIDO and you better be able to educate others about the um, importance of FIDO. So give a history lesson, right? Who are my cryptographers? Any in here? Like experts, cryptographers, you? Nope. Nope, I know, I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah. I know my limitations. <laughs> I know, right? I always like, oh, is it, um, is it, I'm gonna get the names wrong, I know it's wrong. I'm gonna give a crypto lesson. Was it Dick and Jane or what? The two people. Well, if you give her your key, it's your private key, right? Your public key, right? Alice and Bob. Okay, I told you I would get it wrong. <laughs> Alice and Bob. <laughs> I was close. Come on. <laughs> um, you know, so being able to have those conversations, you know, make it uh, a layman's term, right? So, and, and it's not about talking down to somebody. It's being able to talk to them and in a way that they understand exactly what the end goal is. Um, teach about FIDO protocols. And, and then provide decision information to business owners. So that's the last section of it. 2021. So here we are. We have a detailed content outline. Uh, the next piece of the puzzle in putting a certification program together is to actually get the items written. And an item is an exam question. And typically, again, you get a group of SMEs together in a room, starve them for a whole weekend, and make them write items. Make them write exam questions. You don't really starve them for a whole weekend, but. Um, and that's a difficult task. And has anybody in this room taken part in an item writing? Oh, we have one, two, three. It's not easy, is it? 
No. And there's like rules around item writing. Like how do you write an exam question? So you go through this whole like little training on how do you write an exam question? Well, you can't use negatives. This is a good example of not what to do. Wait, what do I mean? Because you, you don't want the person sitting there with the exam, like, is, am I supposed to do this or am I not supposed to? You know what I mean? So it becomes very confusing. So you can't do those. So if you're writing items that have that kind of questioning in it, it's going to get rewritten or thrown away. And I tell you, for a 100-question exam, you have to have about 150, 200 exam questions. So it's not like yours is 150, right? Yeah. So they probably have a pool of about 300 exam questions. That's a lot. All right. So we had to go through this process. And again, still not being able to, oh, actually, no, we did. Our first, our first item writing event we had in person. And a handful showed up, which was great. We had a good foundation of items to build this exam out. The rest of them have been done online. And uh, it was in March, David, when we, no, it was August. <laughs> yeah, he was mad at me. We were in Orlando, and he was like, why'd you pick Orlando in August? And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I used to live there, but I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> it's hot. Um, anyways, uh, some people showed up and others didn't. So from August to now, we've done like a handful, like five or six online sessions. Again, up at like 4.30 in the morning, late at night, 11 o'clock at night, sitting on these because it's a global audience that we're dealing with to get these items written. Um, so it's been quite the process. We have almost a full exam. Um, validated in a draft form. So that's pretty exciting. We're not quite as far along as the CID Pro, but we're getting there. All right, so we decided, we, meaning the subject matter experts, decided that this would be a 100 question exam. All right, approximately three hours. I shouldn't say approximately three hours. It is three hours. But that includes time for you to like, you have to complete an NDA, a little tutorial on this and that. So you actually get maybe about two and a half hours to take the exam, the actual exam. It'll be available globally through Pearson View Centers. And on, you know, just be online. There aren't any proctored sessions. We probably wouldn't do that until we have are able to do a full like in-person authentic conference and we can get the you know get people registered and do it at a conference which would be the ultimate goal to be able to offer that at our conference and approximately 450 dollars so these are still things that we're all working out um so it's not exactly known it is exactly known that it's 100 questions and it is exactly known that you get three hours to do it okay so 2022 See our little logo? Isn't that cute? Yes, I love it. Um, so we have uh, e-badge. We have uh, the FIDO certified professional logo all developed. And we'll have an e-badge for it. So that's pretty exciting. You can post it all over your social media, whatever that looks like. Um, the goal is to launch um, and have the full exam available in January 2022. All right, so just around the corner. Now, just to give you a little bit more detail on that, the exam, so the third part of the process is validating the exam. And that's kind of why Dean mentioned that they're kind of just doing some rewriting um, and making modifications to the exam. And that happens because even though you have several people looking at the items and validating them, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good question. So they're looking for two things. They're looking for people who get this one question right all the time. And that's because maybe it's too easy. And then they look for the ones that nobody gets right, or very few, because it might be too hard or obscure. All right? So we're looking for those things. Um, and part of that process is to do a beta exam. And what happens in a beta exam is that you publish out this exam, people go take it, and then they, get, they take all those scores, and then they give you a cut score. And that's the pass-fail score, all right? So that's like the next stage. So we will do that. So if you go take the exam in, you know, when it goes live, and you can go, get it, go take it, you probably won't get your, your score, your pass-fail, for like 30 to 60 days after. Because we're doing that whole process, all right? So we're identifying 
are these good valid questions for this exam? Okay, so just a little bit of information there. FIDO certified professional. So what does that look like? You become a member of the FIDO certified professional group. Very different from being a member of FIDO Alliance. Okay, so I just wanna make that very clear. The benefits are different. Obviously you get a nice little e-badge to throw around on social media, put on your business card, you know, all that fun stuff. That's what we do because, you know, when you do something like this, you kind of geek out a little bit, right? <laughs> you gotta be proud of it. Um, so you get the certificate and e-badge. We'll have member benefits. So as a part of the professional group, we're gonna define certain benefits that you'll get. Um, FIDO Alliance published a code of conduct. You have to adhere to that code of conduct because we are all under the same organization, even though you would be in, a profession, in the professional group itself. We also will have a membership fee. That's an annual fee. It's kind of maintaining um, the certification itself. And then CPEs. So we will also um, require certified professional, um, yeah, not certified, professional education credits, okay? So attending this conference would earn you um, the continuing education needed for your annual, okay? So all that's gonna be defined within the policies and procedures document itself. Um, and the reason why we do have a maintenance fee is because there is, just because the exam is out and published doesn't mean the back end process is stopped there. So there you continue writing items, people continue vetting items, you switch out your exam forms, and no two forms will ever look alike. Right? So that's the randomness of this. Um, benefits, we talked about some of these benefits. Benefits of being in this uh, FIDO certified professional group is that you get to collaborate with like-minded individuals. I love that um, CID Pro has that whole body of knowledge and the contributions and things like that. Typically when you launch a certification program, I think the biggest benefit that you have um, it, or ID Pro has is that body of knowledge, right? So a lot of times these certification programs um, for professionals get launched and then that body of knowledge starts to come about. So then there's those, all those contributions. Maybe somebody writes a book and then those become the study materials for it. Um, so it's mostly organically grown. And I think um, ID Pro has a big advantage um, where they already have their body of knowledge. And I'm sure all of that material is referenced within that exam. Yeah. A lot of it is, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure other pieces of, but I'm sure a lot of it, okay? Uh, gaining access to special networking events. You know, so become that per, um, part of that professional group, and you know who knows? Maybe it authenticate next year. We might have a special um, group session for you guys, or a networking um, way to network with like-minded individuals. Um, Megan's probably like, no. <laughs> Good. Uh, access to um, industry-specific news, uh, news releases, uh, newsletters. Um, Conference se um, sessions, you know, you could present. Maybe we'll have an education track. Who knows? Um, those are all, all things that um, are possible. Um, and then also, obviously, with um, some of the Authenticate Summits that we've done. So if you can't make it one year to the Authenticate Conference, we do have our summits. And those are other opportunities to earn CPE credits for the program. Okay? Um, I promise I'm almost done. All right, a couple more slides. So status of the program, the, question, the exam questions have been written, uh, they've been, ve been vetted, validated. We're gonna be able to pull a draft of the exam, hopefully um, towards the end of this month, which by the way is going really fast. I can't believe it's already gonna be November, right? And then we'll have our SMEs look at that exam and then we'll go into um, the launch phases of it for early January 22, okay? Um, Dean and I shared our slides ahead of time, and I, I didn't have 
um, the SME contributions in mine, and I saw it in his, and I thought it was just so awesome. I was just like, I didn't even think about that. And it's not because I'm selfish, it's just because I didn't think about it. <laughs> uh, so these are the individual subject matter experts that have contributed in any way, shape, or form. So whether they were part of the job task analysis where we identify the knowledge, skills, and abilities of this individual, to actually writing exams. Um, so that's the group, and I, I appreciate it. it's a smaller group than the ID Pro. It was very hard to recruit uh, subject matter experts who felt they had the expertise to contribute to a FIDO certification. Um, but they definitely stepped up and, and has made that happen. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Any questions, I guess? We're going to go to question mode. Oh, wait. So Mike over here and one over there as well. Gail, if you want to start. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hi there. Gail Hodges from the OpenID Foundation. Uh, question for both of you, actually. Clearly, both of these programs are in their infancy. How are you thinking about measuring success? because I'm sure it's just the very beginning of taking a few people through the program, but Dean, you mentioned 200,000 some jobs are out there. Yeah. So there's a real room uh, for opportunity and growth. So please, love to hear what good looks like for you. Ray, do you <laughs> wanna start? Oh, I guess I can. Um, so how do you measure success? I, I feel like um, it's a hard thing to do with a professional certification program, especially in the, its infancy. Obviously, if you look at other ones, you know, CompTIA, ISC squared, um, all those that, you know, program management, you know, PMPs, that what they've done is they've been able to kind of infiltrate um, the different sectors of, the, of organizations, typically in HR, and shown a, a value for that specific certification for, a, you know, the, the specific job sector or whatever. And I think that that is a really good starting point. Not saying that, you know, organizations need to jump on the bandwagon and start requiring FIDO certified professionals or CID pros, but it is, that is generally a measure of success. When you start seeing organizations um, have that value enough to put it as a job description or job, not a requirement, but a recommendation. Um, I think, that is definitely a measure. Um, once they start, like I said, my LinkedIn, I, I almost look every day and someone's posting the CID Pro, CID Pro badge on their page and it's not like all my friends are all identity people, but a good portion <laughs> of them aren't. So, um, so I think that's a good thing. You know, once people, it gets out there and people understand the value for it and more professionals are seeing, you know, hey, this might be something that I need to do. FIDO's um, deployments. You know, we're seeing deployments, the, those working groups, you know, in all sectors, you know, government, uh, financial, healthcare, all those verticals that, you know, Dean had mentioned, um, deploying. So when organizations are deploying and they're seeking out individuals who would have this expertise to deploy a FIDO solution, I also think that that'll start to happen as well. I think Ray nailed it. Um, I think she covered most of the points that I would cover. The, the thing I would say is, uh, though I'm not a hiring manager, I do a lot of interviews and trying to hire. Um, and, and I work in an organization that is completely focused on identity uh, as, as, a, uh, as a profession. And so for me, as someone who, looking to hire or reviewing resumes, it's uh, it, the measure of success would just start see CID Pro or the FIDO certification program show up on resumes show up in these job requisitions, and they give us a clue about the candidate. They don't tell you that the candidate's the perfect candidate, but they tell you that the candidate um, is, is involved in this industry, has some base level of knowledge, and particularly hiring, uh, it, it helps establish, is this person going to come in and be able to hit the ground running? Right? Or are they going to take two or three months to ramp up on what is identity, what is an identifier? Right. Um, so if I can bootstrap that and I can bring people on board faster and make them productive faster, that's really where um, I, I see, uh, I see a, a success criteria from an ID Pro perspective. Um, and certainly, you know, from my own self-interest in, in looking at hiring people, that's where I'm going to see that benefit. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mike Plage, my question uh, as an attorney who has to 
do uh, annual CLEs and pay fees. That was the one thing that I kind of focused on is that in ID Pro, it is just a one-time certification. There is nothing ongoing, whereas with the FIDO certification, there are CLEs and pay. So can you perhaps explain what you're thinking of why that, that appears to be one of the points of divergence between the two certification programs? Could you share your thoughts on why you decided to go that way? Um, so I'll just speak on behalf of ID Pro and say uh, that's a, a, a question I don't have a good answer to. Um, I wasn't involved in the blueprint design and that part of uh, generating uh, the CID Pro test. Um, what I'd encourage you to do is reach out to ID Pro. Um, there are contact points on the website uh, and reach out to Sarah or Sarah Cicchetti, um, who's one of the founders uh, and also the, the, the force behind the CID Pro exam. Um, she should be able to help you with an answer to that question uh, as well. Just reach out to the general ID Pro membership. There, there should be, again, some email addresses and they can help you with that question. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. That's Right, maybe why you decided to go in that direction. Is there any other way? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, typically, a lot of certification programs do have that, or as you know, you understand within your profession. And what it does is it encourages in, uh, individuals who get this certification to continue to hone their skills. You know, to this this industry, and you all know, as sitting in this room, it changes all the time. It's moving at such a fast pace that if you don't do something to um, keep your skills up to date, then you're going to get left behind. And so it was a way for us to, um, you, you know, having that as part of the program is also from a, an employer benefit, um, showing that you've invested time in this. And not only have you invested time in this, but you're committed to continuing your professional um, education and training. Thank you. I have a question, excuse me, I have a question from the app, which is how do I, how would one train for either exam, but let's say I want to become a FIDO certified professional, how would I, are there training materials or courses or what would the path be for training for the exam? Do I start or do you want me to? Go ahead. Okay. So uh, with, with ID Pro, um, I, I can actually speak to this some, from some personal experience. So um, within my organization, um, I have a number of individuals who are interested in taking the ID Pro exam who are not necessarily identity professionals. They haven't uh, necessarily put in um, the time thinking about identity as a career um, as opposed to security or SDE or AI and ML. Um, and, and so some of these folks have expressed interest. And what I'm doing is I'm putting together a syllabus, uh, a reading room, uh, basically uh, starting with the ID Pro body of knowledge. Uh, and then any relevant articles that I come across. And I come across articles through the ID Pro Slack, through my own reading, Twitter, et cetera. Uh, and we're going to go through a process over uh, a number of weeks. It'll probably be 10 to 12 weeks of going through this, uh, read these articles, come and discuss for an hour or so each week, um, and work toward getting people to that base level of knowledge where they feel they will be successful at taking the ID Pro exam. Um, and that's one way. I'm sure it's not the only way. Uh, of course, I talked about my own history and how I got here. Um, if you've got a number of years experience already, then you may just be able to walk into the exam and take the exam without doing any reading at all. Um, my own experience was um, I probably could have passed without reading, but there were some things that I'm just not particularly familiar with because they, they don't impact me on a daily basis. GDPR and some of the laws around, G, uh, some of the things around GDPR. Uh, I touch it tangentially, but I depend on my legal team to tell me what to do there. I'm not a lawyer. Um, and so it was helpful to go and read some of that documentation to help me um, uh, refine some knowledge around the, these, uh, these concepts that helped me be successful in taking the exam. Hey, Dina, at least sounds really good. You willing to share it with the world and put it, put it you know, maybe a white paper from uh, FIDO Alliance or something? Uh, or are you keeping that to your secret secret sauce for yourself? You know, I, I might keep the secret sauce to myself, but um, you know, I think that's a, a, an interesting question, Bill. Uh, it's something I will uh, I, I will bring up and, and chat with Sarah and the ID Pro folks about because I think there is one. I see one of the challenges with the way the ID Pro uh, body of knowledge is organized. It's not organized in a start here and go this way uh, type of a type of a setup. Um, it's a it's a body of knowledge. And so without 
knowledge coming into it, we, it may be hard to figure out how to, how to contextualize that and what order to read things in. And that's one of the things I've been, been working on is trying to figure out what is the order of operations of read this, then that, then that, in order to, to build that knowledge. Because you've got to start with that strong base in order to build up. And if you, if you don't have those basic concepts, it's going to be hard to get the rest of them. Um, I, I will definitely follow up on that and think about that. Yeah, so from Fido's perspective, um, it, when you create the items, every item, every exam question has to have a reference. And so that reference information would be part of, you know, when we launch the program, here's a detailed content outline, here's a list of references. And at this time, we do not have a training program. We don't have a formal anything as far as like education you know, if you wanted to go take a course and then go take the exam at this time. However, typically when you launch a certification program like this, that information organically grows. And that becomes um, developed by the membership itself. So those within the FIDO Alliance. I know so many of you like present at conferences. So many of you have probably written articles, written white papers and things like that. So, all that information, it's kind of out there. It just needs to be put together. And putting a training program for a certification um, program is very expensive, putting it together. But it's not unreasonable. And perhaps one day we will have a training course where you can come take the class and then take the exam. Okay. Any other questions in the room? Okay, if not, can you all just join me in thanking Dean and Ray for this wonderful overview of CID Pro?